Hello everybody and welcome back, I'm Lincoln and today we're going to work on a question I had in the comments about how to use snapping and alignment for objects in the space. It's someone that's coming from a 2D environment to 3D and I understand where it's coming from because in 2D it's a lot easier to snap things to edges. So we're going to get into this and kind of do the example he was asking about was a spear. So let's get into it. All right, so the first thing we'll do is we'll dump the spear out of here. We don't want that. I'm going to use, uh, let's see, let's go and do the cylinder first just to get a something in the space. And we'll stretch this. Let's see, let's use the gizmo. And we'll stretch it up a little bit. And I won't make it crazy long. We're going to put the grid on here. Okay, so here's kind of the first thing using the grid option. And if this is something, if you don't have the grid and this is something you want to use for all your alignment, come up to this one here. Uh, or is it this one? Yeah, it's this one. So the one that has the little lines and dots. I'm assuming that's like kind of like an equalizer type thing. Anyway, you can turn these on and off and you'll see down here, you'll get your options added. So add the grid because it's super handy. All right, so what I'm doing this because I want to kind of drop this down. Now, reason why is because you'll see we have the red and the blue lines and those are representing your axes. And it makes it easier to align things because you're aligning to that dot right there. Now, every time you bring something in, we'll bring in a cone. Now, this will be first part of a spear point. We'll grab the gizmo tool again, and stretch this up, blow it up. So that's kind of the size I want right there. And we'll bring it up here. And we'll you'll see what we're getting to here in just a second. Squeeze this down. Now, I recommend doing it this way just because this makes it a sharper beveled edge. If you do anything else, when it gets really thin like that, no one has a hard time making a sharp edge and clean unless you just go almost a thousand with the resolution, which makes it a little hard to deal with. All right, so with that done right there, we have a nice sharp edge. Now we can clone this one. I'll come up here. Let's see if we can go and validate it. I'm gonna come up here and clone the cone. Now with this one, we'll grab the gizmo. We'll stretch this one out. It's gonna take a second to see it, obviously. And we can come inside here. Bring it down, so we've kind of got the point. And it really just kind of depends on where you want to go with this. Now this, if you want it perfectly cylindrical, you can just add another fresh cone. This will be okay for what we're doing right now. And what I want to do is, let's go ahead and select that one. Let's give it some paint just to make it easier to see what's different what each piece is. This will make it easier to differentiate. Paint. Okay. So we got our edge. Now say you want, that's your fine edge on the gray, but we want a little bit more. So we can grab this one again and clone that one more time. Clone that one. Stretch it out. Squeeze it in. And for this one we can Get the color again, which would probably be a good idea so we can see it better. Let's go to black. All right, so that's the inside. And we can stretch this up. And you, you can completely change these however you want. It really doesn't matter much. And with this, I think what I'll do is do the nice sweeping edge on the back side. Now, with this, once again, you can use a couple different options for this, just like everything else in Nomad, there's so many different options you can do. We can come in and I prefer grabbing like a spear for this to do cutting because it cuts a cleaner line a lot of times. And I'll we'll stretch this up and rotate it just a little bit. Put this in here. And I'm gonna go ahead and clone that so it's right where I want. So we'll clone it. All right, now to this one here, doesn't matter which one, we're gonna hit the mirror. Now, if the mirror doesn't do what you want, if you had this turned to the side and you want a mirror to a different direction, um, oh, okay, so the mirror will only do it in one direction. 
and which one is that mirror there we go so on the mirror I forget that it's it's moved it's not in this menu it's over here so you can change which way and you can see how the mirror is working they're all mirrored in different ways So that's the one we want right there. You don't want the extra one. And when it highlights it and it goes black, that's when you know you've gone to a different mirror. And there's several different options for these, but we're gonna do this one first. And we'll come up and go ahead and validate the mirror. Uh, we'll just join the children, which is fine. And for this, I'm gonna go ahead and this one, we can just delete this mirror. We'll clone that and then we'll have two so we can cut them both. I'm going to pin this open so we can keep track of what we're doing. Turn one off. We'll turn both of these off. And this one is selected with a check mark. And that one, we can go in voxel. And if we bring the resolution up pretty high, always remember if you're doing something you want to keep a hard edge on, keep edges sharp. And that looks pretty good. So now we can turn this one on. And we like that. Now, with this, I think we'll move it maybe, whoops, not the one I wanted to move, this one. We can move this down a little bit and give it just a little bit different look. And I like that right there. So we'll turn that off, grab this one, and voxel merge that again. Oh, did I voxel merge the wrong thing? I think I did. Let's see which one I want. That one, not this one. It gets confusing, especially when you have these all selected. That, not that one, this one. Okay, so this one selected, that one off together. Voxel merge, bring it up just a little bit, nice and sharp, and voxel merge. Now you have a nice cut spearhead, looks good. Now the next thing that he was kind of talking about in there was you know, something going around it, a hand grip. So there's a couple different things you can do. The easiest thing, if you've got everything aligned, is to add a cylinder and grab the gizmo. Now this, you could use this for your hand wrap, like he was uh, he was talking about, and expand it up a little bit, and you know, instant hand wrap, easy to do. And then if you wanted to add a another, just a little more detail, you can grab a torus. Grab the gizmo, bring it down, expand this up a little bit, and you can clone over here, you can clone over here, I'm just gonna clone here, bring this one down. All right, now, say you want some little beads on those rings, that's an easy one to do. So we can add another sphere of any kind, it doesn't really, much, really matter which one you do. Grab one. So this is one I think maybe this is one of the things he was really wondering about. When you want to do an even pattern around something, super easy. Bring this down. Gonna suck this in. And this is just your radial symmetry, obviously. And about right there. Like it. And we'll paint that one a different color. We'll paint that so we can see it easier. Let's paint this. Makes it easier if you paint things and it's just as easy to unpaint them. So, or change the colors. Okay. Now, the spear right here, you can add a radial. And you can see right there, it already has four. And you can just increase the number you want on here. Okay, we'll go and validate that. Yes. Now the cool thing about that, it's already been validated. Those are all together. You can always come over and separate and bring all those back to separate pieces again. What we're gonna do is clone that and drag the clone down here. And the cool thing about these, you know, if you want, you can always give them a little, whoops, give them a little stretch. It does get a little weird sometimes though. Okay. And that's because if I wanted to stretch all these, these right here. All right, so what you need to do is move your pivot. So go to the pivot, and this is part of being able to align things and finding your snapping points. Because we created them up there in a radial, and then we moved them. 
things move. So you can go to the center of the object like that on the reset. You can do the align, you can do the bottom, you can do a bunch of different things. And now when you're done, you should be able to turn the pivot off, click on that, and we should be able to stretch it just like we want. So it's all about getting everything to the origin or getting your gizmo to the origin of your object. It's which, whichever you have to do. Now, say you have something off, and I think this is something he wanted to know too, is if you have something over here, we'll just add something. We'll, we'll add an iso isocahedron. So we'll do something a little crazy. So we'll add this thing over here. Say you want this, uh, you want this over here. You want some kind of a crazy pattern or something. We want to stretch this, kind of make it a diamond or something, a jewel. All right, so now that it's off this, how do I get it over there? And if you guys haven't done this before, it's very easy. I'm gonna go and just validate it, just make all this easier. Doesn't matter, but we'll go and validate it. Now, you're in here, click it to the front, click it to the home, whatever you wanna do, whatever side. You're in the gizmo, and you'll see you have the gizmo at the top up here. So click on that menu, and the operation for what's gonna to happen to this, if you click on move origin, now we're right back to the origin and it makes it easier to snap. So that way, you know, I know sometimes I just wanna sculpt something off to the side and bring it back into the world, into the center. Simple as move to the origin and you're there. So, very easy. We'll just put this down here at the base and let's expand that a little bit. Let's put a little ring on that and it'll just be like short spear. We'll add another torus just because they're easy, whoops, easy, uh, easy additions a lot of times. But I do like them because you can stretch them like something cool like that. And we'll squeeze it down so it's kind of bound to that. And that's about it, really. You know, if you really wanted to turn this into a jewel, if you guys haven't messed with this yet, he may not have yet. Grab this, instead of being opaque, go to Refraction, and let's paint it. Um, that color is fine, paint all. And now you have a cool jewel on the end of that. And if you want to get really fancy and be able to see that a little bit better, something else, if you guys haven't messed with, another add, just to add a point light. And let's just put it right in that stone. Bring the intensity down a little bit. Now you've got a cool jewel on the end of your spear, knife, sword thing. All right, so I hope this answers the questions that he, that he was looking for. This is real, really simple, easy stuff, but I hope you guys learned something about making the spearhead because those are pretty easy to do. Like I said, if you try to do those sharp edges like that and try to cut them, no matter what you do, they're always going to end up jagged. It's much easier just to use a cone and then like stack them to get a cool edge. All right, I hope you guys learned something with this video and I'll see you in the next one. All right, thanks.